So every day is a chance to learn or remember something that you've forgotten. <laughs> so I came out to this uh, job where they had a stuck valve. The control valves are all one inch Irritrol jar tops, 2400 series. They're great valves, they're really easy to service. I've serviced them hundreds of times, except this time I serviced it. And then when I turned it back on, it would not turn on from the controller. I was getting great ohms readings. I was getting perfect voltage, but nothing happened. When I manually turned it on, eventually it would turn on, but it would take quite a while of me turning it. When I rebuilt it originally, these valves, they have this little plunger inside and the old plunger was looking a little bit worn out. So I pulled it out and put a brand new one in and this was the mistake I made. If you push this plunger all the way in, you'll see that it actually sits lower than where this thread or where the base of the valve stops. If you push it all the way in, then the valve will not work um, electronically from the controller because the water can't actually pass through it. So if you ever do replace one of these plungers, push it in, but don't push it in the whole way. It just needs to sit in there. So it needs to be sitting above the valve, just like this. All it needs to do is just sit in there. If you push it in the whole way, your valve won't turn on and then you'll probably end up turning into one of those contractors that swears down the jar top valves are junk when in reality they're great valves they're super easy to service there's only so many things that can go wrong with them um but yeah that's it just every day is a chance to learn and if you're not sure about something just test it i was very close to cutting this valve out but i kept saying to myself there's only so many things that can be wrong with it. I know I am doing something wrong because the base of the valve, all it is, is just a coupling. So it's either got to be the plunger, the solenoid, the diaphragm, the spring, or even the O-ring that's underneath. It's got to be one of those components. If it isn't one of those, then something else is, is wrong. It, it can't be the valve. It has to be something electronical. But I know everything from the controller is right because I've done my tests. So again, it's just being systematic, working your way through a list and making sure that you don't skip things and then creating a job that should only take 10 minutes. But in, in reality, because you've skip certain things or you've decided that something's wrong even though it isn't and it's just human error you end up cutting out the valve and spending way longer doing something than you should